C parted. We believe that. Uh, we believe that, you know, God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush. Uh, we believe that God um, rained down manna from heaven. Um, we also believe in a lot of the other miracles, like there were giants in the land. There, you know, some of us believe that. Um, we believe there was a literal Adam and Eve. Why is it so difficult? And that's what I'm. That's my big question for the night. Why is it so difficult to believe that the earth is standing still and the sun is actually moving. Well, don't all talk at one time. <laughs> it's called brainwashing since we were little children. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not. I mean, when they put it into school when I was young and started telling me about that, I'd come home and ask my mother, what are they talking about? This don't make sense. Yeah. I could believe that you could just go straight down and come out in China upside down. It didn't make sense to me. Well, I saw that on Bugs Bunny mm -hmm. when I was a kid. That used to be on uh, the Bugs Bunny cartoons. Anybody yeah. else? I remember that Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just because obviously we've all been brainwashed since we were little children with the globe. And I remember even as a as a young child in my bedroom, my parents bought me a globe and it was on the shelf in my my bedroom all the time I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> And anybody, Which, if, if I could submit, that's part of the reason when we say being born again, it is not in a vacuum, right? It's not through a narrow lens. Being born again means literally unlearn everything that the world has taught you and relearn it in accordance with biblical scripture. And this is a prime example of that. Right. Because I, I feel the same way as everybody else. Right. I, I learned that there was a globe and the globe was spinning and moving at all these hundreds of millions of <laughs> miles an hour. But we don't get seasick. Right. You know, you get on a boat for two seconds, you're seasick. But we could be spinning at top speed in the orbit. But none of us are sick. Right. So it's just interesting. But anyway, I'm off my soapbox. But I guess the point is, to Bob's point, you were all brainwashed as little people and. That's what we ended up believing. And that's why it's important to kind of comb through the scriptures and be born again so that we understand what the scriptures are trying to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, that's a powerful point. I think I'm going to use that to preach from one Sunday. Because uh, <laughs> that was that will preach. Because being born again is a, a total transformation yeah. Uh, Second Corinthians, I believe, ten and five says, you know, you got to renew your mind, or yeah. at least uh, you got to cast down, that's casting down vain imaginations. Romans chapter uh, twelve is talking about renewing your mind, but the the casting down of vain imaginations and bringing out everything in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ is one of the one of the scriptures I kind of use as a caveat to remind myself that, hey, this is, uh, we do need to be, we do need to cast down all arguments mm -hmm. that everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess this means that we will be actually turning our back on the world. And um, yeah, uh, so anyway, this story of Joshua uh, causing the sun to stand still, I thought was a really good point to get right into the miracles of what hap uh, has been happening. Um, and then also the, the, uh, the, the very core of believing what God said. I, 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 I struggle with people who say that they believe one thing and then they believe, you know, we're born again, but then at the same time, they can't accept this particular story. You know, they, I mean, they can believe everything. They, they, as long as it doesn't interfere with the brainwashing or the narrative that we've gotten. 
-hmm. So when does that start, uh, the, the brainwashing? What do you think? Around the 1500s with the Jesuits. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, so anyway, in the video, in the video, I promise you, it'll be a lot louder when you listen to it. But yeah, it was Copernicus, Nicholas Copernicus, that uh, instituted that whole idea in the 1500s. And yeah, the Jesuits or... Um, be, that's a lot deeper than most people want to go. If we just say Nicholas Copernicus, that that kind of narrows it down to one particular person who went against all of these other people that were teaching the biblical perspective of the world, the biblical worldview. When he came along in the 1500s, he changed, I mean, he turned that thing on his head and completely changed the perspective of um, the entire world. One person, Nicholas Copernicus, changed the perspective of the entire world. Does that seem odd? Very. That's, it's amazing. Uh, because uh, not only is it an offense to the Bible, but it's an offense to, I think, all the cultures across the world. I think, you know, when you think about that the entire world had a geocentric perspective, whether even like, um, he did mention that Aristotle believed in the geocentric model and so did Ptolemy. Now, these people believed in the geocentric model, but they possibly may still have believed in the round earth because the round earth goes all the way back to uh, 500 years before Jesus. There was a person, you know, of course, that was Pythagoras who came up with the round earth theory. So the round earth theory came from Pythagoras around 500 years. Uh, 500 BC and around 500 BC also was the advent of everything going from being Hebrew to Greek uh, language. Uh, the, the language was uh, changed to Greek. Along with that, you're going to find out that the most of the apocryphal writings were done in the Greek and the Hebrew was um the reason the scholars received the Old Testament uh, as canon is because the majority of the Old Testament that we now have from the um, 39 books of the Old Testament were written in Hebrew. So they could trace that, Hebrew and Aramaic. They could trace that, but when it came to these uh, apocryphal writings, the only writings that we have of apocryphal writings, according to what we understand, was written in Greek. So Greek became the um, chief language when we began the uh, change from the, um, you know, the Greeks conquered uh, the, the, the Persians and then they moved on to becoming from the Greek to the Romans and the Romans conquered the Greeks and then the Romans and the Greeks worked together to create this Greco-Roman world. And so they mixed their cultures together. And so all of this mixture of the culture also brought in, opened the door for philosophies to come into the uh, church or come into the uh, our Christian view because of the because of the influence of the Greeks and people who were influenced by the Greeks in, in uh, Jesus time were called Hellenist. So this was a um, new way of understanding the world. Along with the Greeks, uh, philosophy also came a lot of Greek art and culture. So uh, you know, when I was in Rome again, I keep going back to that. I was amazed when I was in the Vatican and I saw all of the, uh, instead of 
them having pictures of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and all the other things. They had all these pictures of a of a Greek gods, and so this is this was the tour that they gave us of supposedly one of the most holy places in the world, which was wrong, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was more like a pagan uh, visiting a pagan uh, temple. And they had um, uh, pictures of all of these Greek gods, you know, and uh, it, it was amazing to see Diana, um, you know, Neptune, and um, just all of these other uh, Greek gods that were just all over the place. So I said all that to, to say that along with this Greek influence came the belief that the earth is no longer a uh, geocentric earth, but, but it, it's a heliocentric model. And, and they changed their perspective uh, over a period of time. It just kind of like eroded over a period of time from the Greeks at first accepting the geocentric model and the round earth. And then they went from the round earth to, uh, you know, once it got accepted that the earth was round, then they continued to uh, shift their thinking. And then along with that, then we have people like Nicholas Copernicus who comes along in the 1500s and just completely turns the thing on his head. What do you guys think about all that? Well, where did the Dead Sea Scrolls come from? Was that in Greek too, or who, who was that? As Blair, was the Dead Sea Scrolls in Greek as well, or the, which ones? The Dead Sea Scrolls that they found that was also in Greek, wasn't it? Uh, the yeah. uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. I'm I'm not sure. I got to go back and look at them. Uh, look at that and research that. But I can tell you that um, the writing in your book, you're going to find it, that all of the um, the apocryphal writings, the majority of them, the 14 apocryphal books that I talked about earlier were all written in Greek. And that's why they believe that these were later writings rather than uh, writings. These were uh, writings that were... Uh, uh, writings that were later writings, I believe, than earlier writings. And, okay. and uh, of course, they could be, have been transferred down by oral tra tradition. Now, I would believe that, however, the Dead Sea Scrolls go all the way back further because they date back for, further and they had to be written in Hebrew at that particular time. But I can't be absolutely sure about it. But they were, they were all um, like, for instance, writings of um, Isaiah confirming that what Isaiah said, and all of the things that uh, that you know the prophecies of Scripture you can find in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I think they were they were uh, preserved by the Essenes, right? The yeah. the Hebrew Hebrew community they were kind of like almost like Hebrew monks that were like isolated and pulled away even from the uh, Pharisees that they thought they were too liberal. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so these these writings were definitely, I would say, from the Hebrew, you know, yeah. and he preserved from the Hebrew. Yeah, I would I would think that they were. Um, I have not yeah. found any evidence that they weren't, but I can tell you, though, again, the... Uh, the apocryphal books and, and some of the uh, books that we talked about earlier. And I, if we go all the way back to the original lessons, you'll see a list of those apocryphal books. Those were in uh, Greek. So, but anyway, uh, getting back to the heliocentric model, um, again, now we have this whole perspective of science that is uh, that Paul spoke about and he was trying to warn Timothy about, and he told Timothy, you know, don't get caught up in knowledge or science, uh, the contradictions of science. He called it the contradictions of science. And, and uh, can you imagine that at that particular time, those people were having to uh, 
put up with being contradicted by uh, science and Greeks were really into knowledge. The, the, you know, the knowledge of the Greeks is when, when we use the word science, we mean knowledge. But the knowledge of the Greeks was always contradicting the scriptures. And so um, Paul told Timothy, you know, you learn these scriptures all the way as a child up. What scriptures was Paul talking about? What do you think uh, scriptures he was talking about? Old Testament. Well, he's talking about Old Testament, right? The Old Testament. The New Testament. Old, yeah. Old, Te Old, Old yeah, Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament, obviously, because there wasn't no New Testament. But that is a an interesting thing because we don't really stop to think about that. Um, but um, uh, when when he talked about science, so called falsely, right? Um, and that's found uh, here, uh, the science so-called falsely uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 19. And if you have that, somebody want to read that? <clears throat> 19 and 20. Right here. Yeah. Okay. We can go from the King James uh, 19. Wait, first Timothy. Lay up the store of uh, first Timothy 19, okay. a good foundation. Yes. So laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Chapter uh, verse 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. Verse right. 20. So 21, and professing they have erred concerning the faith, grace be unto thee, amen. So uh, yep. Paul was warning him. Any thoughts? interesting yeah well anyway uh paul was wanting uh timothy not to get caught up in the vain um babblings and avoid profane babblings and the oppositions of science uh, oppositions of of the knowledge and the prevailing knowledge at that particular time and during his particular time was the knowledge of the uh, uh, of the Greeks, because the Greeks in Athens and all the rest of that they had a god to all of the they had a different god for just about everything, and uh, they had what they believed to be truth, and they talked about these things, and so when the when they talked about that there was only one Lord and one Savior, and it was Jesus Christ, and and He is uh, one with the Father, and uh, there's only one God, and and they would talk about the the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and and as they were talking about this, the Greeks would say, no, there were more than one God, uh, as they were talking about this. Um, place being the way it the way it is that you know our earth is actually a maybe a, you know a geocentric earth with a uh, with a covering over it they talk about possibly uh, the possibility that the earth might look a different way um so i i, I believe that again these arguments about Joshua causing the sun to stand still could also be looked at also differently and argued against. So as Christians, like you said, the born again experience, if we're gonna be doing the born again experience, the born again experience is all about accepting what the Lord has told us with no reservations, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. You know, I, I just got to just 
say quickly that my pastor doesn't believe, obviously, in the uh, you know geocentric Earth and all that, but in flat Earth. But you know, I one time when we were having a debate, I made the comment. I says, "Well, you know, you say that you believe the Bible, and it just you know I didn't really mean it to try to insult them or anything, but." You know, it just came out like I was just so frustrated at that moment. And I just said, you know, you say you believe the Bible, but you don't believe all these scriptures that I've given you about what the Bible says. Uh -huh. you know? And it's just, it gets very frustrating, you know. I can imagine that would be frustrating. Um, it's very frustrating for me too, you know, just, uh, but again, uh, it's, I I kind of think in a way it has to do with, and maybe I'm I'm in error. I, it may just not be true at all. Do people really know the difference between what the world teaches and what the Bible teaches? Because again, when I was bringing this up, and I was just talking about it before I was I was preparing the lesson for the night to discuss it, and I said, "Well, we'll just discuss this." And let's see where the, where the chips, let the chips fall where they may. I think, again, as I was discussing it, even just talking to my family, my wife and that kind of thing, my wife is kind of, uh, uh, she's more like, okay, that's fine. You know, she doesn't give much thought, <laughs> you know, to that, you know, because she's thinking about other stuff that, you know, we got to do and bills we got to pay and all that kind of stuff. So as I was talking about it, she she looked at me and she said, "You really are a nerd." <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment. That's what she said. You really are a nerd. But I don't know if people use that as a defense mechanism to stop from thinking. But I I think that there are times when people just really do not know the facts. Like your pastor, maybe not really feeling what you're saying because he doesn't know the facts and he might be slightly fearful to find out. Well, you know, I, I've given him um, a few, few different books cause he doesn't like technology and he doesn't like the internet. And he even has an old, like an old flip phone that he uses, you know, he's like <laughs> with the big buttons. <laughs> yeah, Thelosaurus, I would call it, you know. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I can't, it's frustrating also because I know so many good videos that I could send him, but he doesn't like to watch videos. So I gave him a couple of books. And in fact, I gave him, um, what's that fellow's name that he's he, he did the debate just recently with that other non flat earth pastor? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Did the conference right. with him. Yeah. Right. He was I, at my conference. Right. Okay. He was at your conference. Greg Locke. Is yeah. it Greg Locke? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not Greg Locke. The other one. Oh. Who was the other guy's name? I don't remember his name. Edo. Yeah. But I gave, yeah. Odo. Pastor Odo. Yeah. Dean Odo's book. I gave him yes. Dean Odo. Yeah. You know. And oh, yeah. He's got a. He, it, it, when you get that, that's a thick book. Yeah. And I figured, okay, this should, you know, be pretty good for giving them tons of information because I've given them other stuff, you know. Yes, a ton of information. And it's still, in fact, we had a men's fellowship. I don't want to go too long in this, but we had a men's fellowship and I was getting ganged up on by a few people, you know, with the flat earth versus the round earth thing. And so I finally said, you know, the, the pastor at that point had heard what was we were talking about. And I said, I said, all right, look, look, let's let's turn this conversation around. I said, you give me all the evidence for the round spinning earth from the Bible and go ahead and convince me. Go ahead. And he goes, I can't. He said that to me. I can't right. I can't prove or I can't teach the spinning ball earth from the Bible. Yeah. I said, Well, there you go. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, and that's that's a hard thing to uh, prove from a biblical perspective, but again, like I, like I have it, I, 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 I did the AI. I did the AI with one of the the videos that I did, and I put on the AI the difference between the two. So again, I just asked AI, um, 
explain the difference between the heliocentric model and the geocentric model and how the Bible, which side the Bible leans on. And so it just gave me and spit it all out. It spit it out and said, there is a very wide difference between the geocentric model or the, the you want to call it flat earth and the heliocentric model. And it, it delineated it. I don't know if you got the chance to watch that video, but it just put a, the, it just put the information right there in your face. There are two, there is two different perspectives. I don't think that the majority of pastors would actually see it that way. I don't think that they're, uh, you know, I don't think they know. What's how the name of that? You, how could you know? How could you know that and still teach the opposite? What's I the just, name of that video? Huh? What's the name of that video you're talking about? Uh, the video is, um, I don't know. It's one of the only ones that, that that I pulled out and I laid it out there. But it's on my uh, on my YouTube channel. And I just put, uh, it's just, it, it, I think it's just called the difference between the flat earth and the, uh, or the heliocentric model or something like that. I think it's called that but I don't know exactly what the name of it is, but the, the video just lays it right out in the open. It's no, it, it's only about three minutes long and it lays out everything, the whole argument. And so, and then at the end, the AI says, two different models, two different ways of thinking, two different ways of seeing the world. Uh, and that's basically what they say. And then it goes off. That's all it says. It just says two different models, two different. Ways. I don't know if people see that. Let me see. It's called Greeks versus the Hebrews shaping our world. And it's um, it starts out by saying. Do you do you understand why we believe the earth is round? That's what it starts out, because AI is not going to say that the earth is flat. Right. But it will tell you the difference between the Greeks and the Hebrews vis work, a way of seeing the world. Here it is here. This is it. If you if you see. Oh, my goodness. Now that jumped. I'm just like my like my dad. He I used to give him the phone. And then as soon as I give him the phone, he touched the screen and it jumps off. Of him. He's going. Oh, bless him. Uh, but yeah, there it is right there. Greeks versus the Hebrews shaping our world. That's a good one. If you, yeah. if you watch that video and, and you watch that video because it's, it's spoken as if a person believes the earth is round. And it will teach you that the earth is round, but it will tell you that the Hebrews believe that it was flat and why they believe it was flat. And it will go over the details of, of the Hebrew and the Christian perspective. It says the Hebrews and the Christians share the same perspective of a flat earth. It will tell you that, which, which is a mind blower because, okay, even AI will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Even AI, but again, when I when uh, in the book that that was what why I put the book Graven Image out there because in the book Graven Image, I sh I just share the information that there are two different perspectives. It's it's just two different perspectives. There's the geocentric model and there's the heliocentric model, and so you have the heliocentric model winning because that's what everybody believes that we live in the heliocentric universe where the helios is the sun and the sun sits in the middle of the universe and the, and the, and the, and the, and all of the spheres rotated around but the bible the biblical biblical model teaches us that we are sitting stationary and that the sun and the moon rotate over us and and and, and uh, even AI, like I said, I did a. Uh, this was an AI video, right here, an AI video. I just asked AI, explain the difference 
contrast the difference between the Greeks' view and the Hebrews' view of the world. And it, and it does it. And, and it lays it out. This is what the Greeks believed. That's why Timothy was being told, don't lend an ear to the contradictions of science, so-called false name. Mm -hmm. And the argument is still going on today because all of our rockets and all of our space program is, is um, written or, you know, the Apollo is a Greek god. You know, um, all of the rockets that we name are after a dragon or a god. Mm. It's not, it's no mistake that they use the Greek perspective of seeing the world to space uh, to form the space program because space and the Greeks, um, the Greek perspective of of um, the gods and everything, all that militates or contradicts the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't know if people were willing to think that deep. You know what I mean, Bob? Uh -huh. I, you know, I don't think your pastor is willing. I don't. If your pastor would really think about it and he would know it, he would know. He would probably feel ashamed. You know, honestly, I believe that James sums it up. I think it's James five eleven, if I'm not mistaken. But they are willingly ignorant of the truth. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's exactly how I feel about it. He doesn't want to go there. He doesn't want to accept. He knows the baggage that would come along with believing that, and he just doesn't want to go there. Right. He doesn't want to go there because it, it would make him responsible. It's almost like, I don't want to hear it. 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 It, make, exactly. it would make him responsible for changing his perspective and telling the people that he was in error and allowing them to go down this road, this rabbit trail. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then you're going to gain more criticism. Right. And if you have a bunch of people that are following you, it's almost like when we was doing the COVID thing, there were a lot of pastors who just said, hey, we're going to go with, we're going to go with whatever they say, science and all that. And mm -hmm. they did. They, they folded. Mm -hmm. You know, it was ridiculous to tell churches to close down and liquor stores to stay open and casino halls. That was absolutely absurd. You know, I'll, I'll give my pastor credit for that. He stayed open. Okay. Cops actually knocked at the door at the time. And they, and he said, look, if you're going to tell me that we're not essential, but you're going to tell me that that package store across the street is that it ain't happening. Right. They, act, they actually left. They didn't they didn't bother him. Well praise God for that. Yeah. Well see now that 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 makes the hey he's he's on target then. Uh, in that area, yeah. <laughs> well you know again we're all missing in some some area or another. But I like I said if you if I think if, if there was some way for him to actually know it uh, you know, just the question alone, one question. Pastor, what happened on the second day of creation? That one question alone. Or the or the next or the or the another question. This one question, this is another question you can ask. Pastor, what day did the dry land appear? And what was the dry land called? Earth. <laughs> and what day? On the third know. day. Right. So what were we looking at before that? Water. What was it in the shape of a a ball? It was food. <laughs> Does water actually form in the shape of a ball? 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? They, just just these little questions alone, and then he let him pick his way out of it. You know, ask him questions. <laughs> Don't try to prove to him anything. Just ask yeah. questions. Right. And you know that's what happened to me. I was in Bible study, and uh, a young lady and asked me a question, and it, this was way back a long time ago. And I'm talking about, I might have been in my 20s at that particular time. She asked me a question, and she, and I couldn't answer it. She said, what is the firmament? And I said, it's got to be on the ground because it's hard. And I said, I'll get back to you on that. And I was teaching Bible study in my father's church, you know. And that question had bothered me all that time because I was like, thought I was hot stuff. You know, I'd been at the Congress of Christian Education and I'd been teaching there and all that kind of stuff, biblical stuff. But uh, when I got, you know, when I really got the revelation, I was like, oh, man, I, I sure didn't understand this story. Oh. And you go back and you read the story and you, you begin to understand, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I've brought up to many people that you know they always they always throw the Isaiah forty twenty two at you, you know that oh yeah, terrible, you know that's their one of their favorite arguments. Yeah, and I retort, well, Isaiah twenty two eighteen, he talked about being tossed like a ball. I said, and the word that he uses, one's dur, and one's a, a different Hebrew word. Right, and, and I said he there's two different words here. I said he's not using the same word in forty twenty two and twenty two eighteen for ball. They're two different. He, Isaiah knew the difference between a ball, mm -hmm. you know, or, and or a circle, a, right? Yeah, and a circle. He knew the difference. So why didn't he use that word that he used in twenty two eighteen in forty twenty two? Right, because he he knew it wasn't the same thing. Right. Yeah, we are in a circle, uh, on top of the circle. And I, I like to tell people it's like uh, having a table in a in a room. You know, a table sits in a room, and in the room you can have different things in the room while the table is sitting there, and you can have stuff on top of the table. And uh, then there's lights up uh, up in the up in the ceiling somewhere. And I always say that that's the way the Earth is. We sit on a table, and you look up and you see lights. And so uh, people, even people back in, um, uh, you know, in ancient biblical days didn't believe what, what we believe today now with Copernicus coming along in the 1500s teaching us the whole uh, uh, heliocentric model. They believed that when they looked up that those were gods that they were seeing. So again, when uh, Paul and um, Barnabas were walking through, I think uh, they, they visited, uh, I think it was uh, Paul, might be Paul and Silas, uh, when they uh, were, yeah, I think it's Barnabas. Uh, they were walking through, they thought that they were um, Jupiter and another God that it came down, Mars or something, that it came down to them because of the miracles that they were doing. Either way, um, this is really a lot of conversation tonight. Um, I tell you what, I have on the, um, in the Bible school, there is the video. And I, you know what, I'm going to put that other video up for you guys to watch. Uh, and uh, the one that I was just sh showing you, I'm going to put that one up on from YouTube. For you guys to watch. And then also there are the questions. There's a Bible study, the miraculous events of the book, book of Joshua. OK, and on the Bible study, you can go over the Bible study and just kind of like answer the key questions. Uh, you know, the details of the miraculous events, the crossing of the Jordan River, that when they crossed the Jordan River, they didn't sink. They actually walked the uh, walked across on, on uh, dry ground. And then um, uh, the crossing of the Jordan, the fall of Jericho, 
Uh, that was the miraculous event of the walls falling down, the sun stands still, C, and uh, the discussion part, which is group discussion and reflection. So you guys can do that, I think, uh, on your own. Uh, so you can go over that. They, that'll help you to go over Joshua. Are there any questions about uh, Joshua tonight, though? Sorry we couldn't cover it all. We can only cover a few things. Uh, on the next time that we get together, I'm going to go through uh, the rest of the books of uh, Judges and Ruth. And we'll go through those uh, historical books. I want to ask about uh, a lot of the people that were killing. Weren't those some of those people, Johns or Nephilim? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Uh, you know, it's clear that they were in from the book of Numbers. And, uh, you know, when they when they talked about them, they went over there and they viewed those people and they were the sons of a knack. And there was a uh, there was also interesting video that I put posted in the last lesson. And they talk about the Raphaim and uh, uh, again, the. Uh, the giant Og, Og, and so uh, they have, some of these giants had names and, and what have you, uh, and they were, they were actually known by their uh, descent from giants, you know, they, they were known by that, uh, you know, it wasn't, it was no accident that they were giants, it's not like, oh, they just were tall people, no, they actually were six-fingered giants. As a matter of fact, these giants even were around even today uh, because, um, you know, when they were selling the uh, seven seas and, and we had some of the explorers go around, they actually ran into these giants on the various islands. But these giants and during um, the biblical times, David was so aware of them that when he would fight these giants, um, he would actually lay them down on the ground and measure them. And if they were above a certain height, he would have them also not just kill, but have their heads chopped off, I guess, so that they would never come back again. So they had like six fingers, uh, two rows of teeth, and uh, some of them were cyclops and all kinds of stuff. So they had all kinds of things happening in the biblical days. And that's but, not being taught because I'm seeing so many people. It's like they're they're talking like God's this horrible thing because look at all the women, children, and everything that was killed. They don't bring into it that they were corrupted. Yeah, that's right. Corrupted. They haven't been taught. Right. Well, you know, uh, the the bloodshed, I can't, I still have a hard time, even if they were giants, you know, uh, the bloodshed. I don't know if all of the bloodshed was against giants. I think some of them were uh, heathenous people who were wicked. And uh, that's what the Bible says, you know, that the one of the reasons why God didn't allow Abraham to raise up a, a group of people to just slay those people at the particular time because the iniquity of those people had not reached a level where God could actually justify having them slayed. So by Joshua coming in there, bringing a war against those people, it was not just a war against the giants, although that was a big problem, it was also a war against wickedness. And so that's what the Bible says, the, the wickedness, I believe, of the Amorites had not reached this full level, but since God had warned them so many times or given them a chance to clean up the act, uh, he sent them in to destroy that, that group of people for that purpose. And so God was justified in doing that because he's the judge of all men. And, you know, he used a, a righteous group of people, a holy nation. That's the Bible says that they were a, a holy nation to him. That's what he told, told them. And he, 
He said that in front of Moses. Remember, Moses brought that law to them. And in, and God says, you're going to be my own special brand of people, a peculiar people, a holy nation. And so they flunked that test because they went to doing all sorts of stuff like the other people around them. And so God said, well, I'm going to wipe out your generation and I'm going to raise up another generation. And so Joshua lived into that next generation at 40 years later. And they they uh, he led them into the promised land. So it was be, the uh, there was a big issue with sin as well, but I, you're right. I think a lot of pastors overlook or won't talk about the giants because you know it's too convenient just to talk about the sin of the uh, the people, the iniquity of the people was great, and that's the only reason why they went in there. There were twofold reasons, I believe, is again to get rid of this um, this seed uh, that was not. Uh, what God wanted, you know, this uh, aberration of nature, this these freaks of nature, and then also to deal with the uh, sin issue. So he waits until it, the sin gets to such a point that there's no other way he has to wipe them out. Yeah, I, I think that that was uh, the scripture, the iniquity of... Um, uh, the Amorites had not reached its level, and that's why God, um, uh, found, when they when He finally sent them in, uh, let me see here the iniquity of the Amorites there uh, had has not reached uh, its full level, and that's found in Genesis chapter fifteen verse sixteen. So that was the condition of the people at that particular time. He said, you'll be strangers. He told um, uh, Abraham, you'll be strangers in this land. Uh, and then in the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here again because the, sin the sins of the Amorites uh, will by that time have reached this level. So verse 16 he was telling Abraham, uh, your descendants will take the land. And that was Joshua. And that's why we're reading Joshua now. But going all the way back to Genesis chapter 15, verse 16, we're finding out that the reason uh, that they had to wait is because the iniquity of the Amorites had not reached its full potential or full level yet. So God was going to wipe them out. It's kind of God's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them enough rope to hang themselves. When they hang themselves, I'm, I'm going to send y'all in there. Y'all going to go in there and read them. <laughs> and so that's kind of what happened. And you know what? No matter what happens, uh, no matter how it happens, there's still a, uh, a resentment of, the, of, 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 of people who take other people's land. There, there's still that resentment. You know, right now, if I were to say anything about the Jews, That's another thing to unpack, and and uh, and, this, and the Palestinians, mm -hmm. uh, that is a that's a loaded issue because a lot of people say, well, you know, they are not real Jews anyway. So I don't know. I, I, all I can say is that um, there is a problem with that land. And if we are to believe the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is going to come back to that particular land. Uh, we also believe that the scripture says that the, the, the children of Israel will become wicked and they'll start doing all sorts of stuff. So um, in that land so much that, you know, Jesus has to come and rescue them because the world is going to close in on them. And uh, because of the stuff that they're doing right now, so I'm I, you know that that's a really sensitive issue because there are a lot of people who believe otherwise, but it's it all stems back to um, whose land is it anyway? Did they have a right to the land? Um, how could they just go in there and kill those people and take their houses and their property? And, and who gave them the right to do that? And the Bible says that going all the way back to Genesis, it says that God was 
sent Abraham to that land, told him to spy the land out and told him he was going to be a, uh, just a stranger in the land until his, uh, the fourth generation, when the fourth generation comes back, uh, they are going to wipe them out because of the iniquity of the people. And God says in scripture and, and, uh, numbers, he says, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. And, um, and, and, uh, you know, cattle that you did raise and I'm going to give you all this, uh, the, the inheritance of the land that you didn't even, you, you didn't even rake or hold the land or at all. I'm going to give it all to you. Is that fair? Even if they were giants. <laughs> he, he gave it to him. And what I hear so much now is, well, it's there. So it's that, but when I read that, there was conditions on that gift. Oh, yeah. Conditions. Mm -hmm. They did not, nor are mm -hmm. they up to those conditions today. Right. Deuteronomy yeah. says that if you don't obey, uh, then you're going to just, it's all going to be taken away from you anyway. Uh, I think yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 10, uh, I think that's where he talks about the blessings and the curses. I could be wrong, but I think that's where he talks about the blessing and the curses. I'm going to give you, uh, you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. And then he says, if you don't do what I tell you to do, then you're going to be cursed in the city, cursed in the field, cursed mm -hmm. when you come and go. Mm -hmm. And they'll come and take your land from you rather than you taking their land. So yeah, there were conditions and they failed. And that's why they were ostracized from the land anyway. In 70 AD, Jesus said that this whole place is going to be desolate. Mm -hmm. You know, go. not one stone shall remain upon another. So the Rothschilds and the Jews came back supposedly um, in uh, the 1948. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't really know. Um, but that's that's what we're looking at. But I can I just interject real quick. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of Bible scholars believe that it's we're right around the six thousand year mark. We're pretty close to six thousand years since creation. And of course we know that we have a thousand year millennium yet to come. So even at that point, if we're close to the six thousand years, then these people that are there would have to be the people back in that land, you know, to fulfill the the, the seven thousand years, God God is a seven is a number of completion, right? And uh, so I think you know, time wise, it fits that they're in the land. God God's going to sort them out. God knows who the twelve tribes are. In the Book of Revelation, He saves the hundred forty four thousand. He knows who they are, whether we know or not. It's very confusing, obviously, with all. Yeah, the, and and it is very confusing. But and and you're right about that. God is not as confused as we are. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He knows exactly who those people are, and it could turn out that the number of the Palestinians are actually uh, Jews too. Oh, you know, I, yeah. I don't know. So it could turn out that those people over there are fighting each other and all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But again, God has a way of separating the wheat from the chaff. And I just think, yeah, we we ought to just keep our mouth off of it because there are a lot of people, you know, they get just downright belligerent about it. They're not Jews anyway. They have, well, somebody's over there. <laughs> you know, something's going on. So the way I look at it is that just stick to what the Bible says. The prophecy, the prophecy says that Jerusalem will become a stone of offense to the entire world. And the whole world will come together and they will create a, a unity against Jerusalem. And that's when Jesus will come back. So I don't know whoever those people are that's going to that's gonna be over there at the particular time. That's when that's that war is going to happen. That's, you know. So uh, in terms of who, who they are, I don't they're know. All, they're all Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> yeah. That's what I always tell the Jehovah's Witnesses. What tribe are you from? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh yeah, at least they, at least you're not a Mormon because they can come up with some strange things. Yeah, they're they're pretty good at debate. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, I, we better get out of here. Um, I, I'm hey, I, going to. I want, I want to tell you one quick funny story too with my pastor. He, I, sure. I'm in a, I'm in a Baptist church, uh -huh. and on the on the table when you come in, he had the the newspaper, the Sword of the Lord, I believe it is Baptist newspaper. Oh, yeah, and they had an article just recently about space. Oh and boy, they started out the article with a scripture. Uh -huh. And then they went into this whole diatribe of what science teaches about, you know, the whole enchilada. Uh -huh. And one scripture, other than that very first launching pad that they used at the very, very start of the article, not one scripture backed up any of the stuff that they said. And I gave him the newspaper and I said, have you read this? And he hadn't read it. I says, well, they went through all this teaching about, you know, what science is teaching. I says, and they don't have one scripture to back up anything in here. Yeah. And he goes, I'll take a look at it. That's what I always get. Well, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And he, <laughs> well, he, he's, he's, he's already. Tell him to pray about it. Yeah. He already <laughs> has you on his radar. Oh, absolutely. So, so he probably, he's like, you know, I'll just humor him. Right. That's all he's going to do is humor you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, he's not going to ever. I don't think he's ever going to be able to relax around you unless unless, uh, you know, you you bring him to your house and you get him drunk. And uh, <laughs> 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 uh, no, I'm just teasing. But if, if you bring him to your house and possibly maybe you guys just spend some time um sitting down eating together and he's able to feel like all right all right i'm a i'm able to be human around this guy and I, i've tried that i've tried that my wife and i were on the same page and we've tried to talk to him and his wife you know just we had him over for dinner and all that and oh you did it, it came up and you know but it doesn't go anywhere he doesn't you know. Yeah, he, he's got to feel like he's got to put his defenses down and feel like he's able to be human around you. Otherwise, because it, it it's a frightening thing when you're in leadership and the person who is under you knows more than you. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's funny, his wife, my pastor's mm -hmm. wife, I'm good friends with her brother. Uh -huh. and her brother, who is the worship leader at the church also believes as we believe so uh -huh. he's same debates with his brother-in-law <laughs> you know so he he gets it there's actually about last i knew i think there was like about 10 people in the church that actually believed in the biblical cosmology which for a church that's only about maybe 40 50 people that's a pretty good percentage actually yeah yeah well and you know the thing is is that it's not the end, it, you know. It's not the end of all the be all. It's just part of it. I, right. you know, I would, cut him some slack, you know, cut him some slack. He just really, you know, <laughs> I have. I backed off. I backed off yeah. lately. Yeah, he, but but again, he's got to feel like I. I don't. You you really not trying to usurp any particular role that he has or make him feel dumb or anything like that because that's part of it you know pride will keep you from uh you know this uh, stepping out there and saying hey i didn't know this you know uh show me more or tell me more uh sometimes also it's it, it's who it's coming from you know and, well i don't want him to know that i that i believe that but if he asked maybe if he asked someone else you know that that's another thing but i He's not going to listen to you tell him that. But yeah. sometimes you might work all your time trying to tell him something. And when, uh, I think when it's, have, have you ever had this happen? Let me just say this. You've been planting a seed, planting a seed, planting a seed. And then all of a sudden, this person comes back like it's a brand new idea. Because they <laughs> ran into somebody who 
just said one word to them and it was the tipping point. And you're like, well, that's what I've been trying to tell you all along. And, and they're like, they're not receiving it from you because it's got to come from somebody. You know, it's like my son. I, I, he's, he's just, you know, I've got several sons, but my youngest, my youngest boy who is in the house still, uh, he's turning 19 this year and he's going to college now, you know? And so he's in college and uh, he comes to me and he tells me, you know what, dad, my professor, he's, uh, he's pretty much like you. He told me something that really blew my mind. And what he told him was something that I had been telling them all along. But he didn't really receive it from me. <laughs> he had to hear it from this, this older guy there. And I said, I said, well, what does he believe about COVID and all this? He, oh, he's the same way. He just gets, uh, he downright mad about it. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah, I think he wants to tell, say a lot more in class, but he's not going to say it because, you know, he's in this classroom. But um, so sometimes they have to hear it from somebody else. Right. You know, they they have to hear it from somebody else. And I know you want to like go Eureka. I, you know, we finally got it. But I don't think it's going to that's not going to be where it comes from. But it, but the seeds that you're planting will sprout. Mm -hmm. And when they do sprout, watch out because he may oh, be yeah. he may make up a whole sermon series on this whole thing. Maybe, maybe I'll have to give Raven an image because I have that on my bookshelf, too. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Graven Image is very simple. It's not like Dean's book. Dean has really did a lot of heavy research. I did the research on only one thing, which was the Greeks versus the Hebrew. I just wanted to show that perspective. That's all I wanted to do. Because again, that was, that's the way I saw it. I said, well, this, this ought to sum it up. These people had revelation knowledge from God, the Hebrews did. And the Greeks made up a whole theory with no revelation from God. You know, they made up an entire world perspective, worldview with no revelation from God. And the Hebrews had revelation from God. It's amazing. Anyway, we better go. Um, uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Uh, it's a wonderful discussion. I pray, Father, for uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ that, uh, Lord, uh, they'll be influential in all avenues of their life. And they uh, have, obviously, people in their life they want to tell uh, about um, the truth. They want the truth to get out about a lot of things. And, and we're just, Lord, um, we're just servants we are not the uh we are not the originator of the message we know that the message needs to be communicated by the holy spirit and we pray that the holy spirit will uh, be strong in this room in this chat room and that uh we'll be able to go out and let our lights burn before men that they'll see our good works and give glory to the father in every way in every uh form and of, of life and kindness and gentleness and also in philosophy and understanding we pray it in jesus name for greater wisdom to be spread abroad amen and amen Thank well you. all right uh god bless you and uh let me see uh gnome j is it how, what what how do you pronounce that no it's james james gomez okay <laughs> I was on earlier. I've been on, but uh, my I had on my uh, tablet now. So I was on we, the phone earlier, and you couldn't hear me. Well, we're glad that you made it to uh, be able to get everything straight now, technologically. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. For sure. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get out of here. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, Y'all have a good evening. And, you too. Uh, Thank you. you know, Enjoy you enjoy the rest of the evening what is left of it. You too, thank you. All right, God bless. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. And uh we get out of here. <laughs>